So it's been a while, hasn't it? I just saw this game and it was pretty cheap on the PlayStation Store, so I, def I decided to give it a look. And I haven't been disappointed so far. I haven't even tried the game, but I saw a few reviews and a few screenshots, and this game looks pretty, pretty impressive for a, a game that's only seven dollars, six dollars, something that I got it for. Um, and I'm really excited to try it out because the short horror game, and that's exactly what I want to be doing on this channel. I've been spending my other time on my alternate channel, not the park, uh, sorry, not on this channel, Bucklin 2000, it's on the other account called Everybody Loves Eden, where I've been releasing songs uh, made by a singer, his name is Eden, and basically what I did was I released one song and that got really popular, wanted, people wanted to see more, and so I've been, I've been giving them more, and that's, that's what I've been doing uh, this time of my break on YouTube, but hopefully I'll be back every now and again to play a few interesting games like The Park, or I tried playing Uncanny Valley, another short horror game, just a little while ago, but it, in all honesty, it really wasn't that interesting, so I'm pretty sure The Park will be interesting, so let's give it a shot. Hmm. Well, there you go. Guess this game is supposed to be a little bit creepy. That's what I'm thinking anyway, from what they just warned us about. Like, what? You need psychiatry afterwards. Well, they said you don't need psychiatry afterwards, but it's not like I'd ever get to that point where I need psychiatry, right? Well, interesting start so far. <laughs> Alright, here we are. Funcom presents. In my heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. Where's Mr. Bear? I haven't seen Mr. Bear, Callum. Stay in the car. I'll go and ask information. Oh my god, look at this sensitivity. Holy moly. Well, it's on four, and look at it. I don't reckon you should leave the kid in the car by himself. I know it's broad daylight and there's like nothing around. Except for this guy over here. Quick, have a look at you. The graphics haven't been fantastic so far. In that little cutscene, it was a bit, it was a bit iffy, in all honesty. But hopefully, that's the like only cutscene we get, and everything we see from here on out is through the actual gameplay itself. That that'd be interesting. Attention, patrons. The park is now closed. Please make your way to the car park at your earliest convenience. Employees prepare the park for shutdown. Okay. I'm pressing X. Tell me to press X, I'm pressing... Calum okay, was born the day this place opened. This is his favorite place in the world. It's his kid's favorite place, is it? Oh my god. <laughs> that took me by surprise, that black what? screen. Lorraine. Lorraine. Don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. Take a deep breath and think about the last place you saw your son's teddy bear. Hey, stop! I think your boy just ran into the park. I'll unlock the gates for you. Okay, this is strange. Should I go back and see if he's actually gone? Let's have a look real quick. Oh well, he actually did leave. Well, there you go. 
Alright, let's get him then. Have a look for him. For a circle to shout Callum. Uh, shouting provides audible and visual clues to guide Callum, you. I told you to wait in the car. Over here. I got a trophy. Welcome to the park. You won't be able to see it because I'm using the share button <laughs> to record my game. There's something special about the entrance to an amusement park. A line drawn between the real world and the world of whimsy within. On this side, the apathy of our everyday lives. And on the other, anything we might dare to dream. It's no wonder Callum ran back inside. I wouldn't want to leave either. Attention employees, the park is now closed. Have a safe journey home. What is happening? What is happening? Hmm. Hmm, I don't like this. Ooh. Oh. My God. Oh God. The park. What happened here? I'm afraid to talk of running. Okay, I can. I don't want to have to run though, man. Oh, I've just become a lot to faster. Get lost here. Oh, there he is. Come here. That's weird. It wasn't letting me sprint. I'll find him later. I didn't even get to have a look at around this place. Can I interact with anything? Like anything? Oh my god, I don't like the look of that. Can the game please explain to me why it just turned from like twilight to like complete darkness? Harry Killen is Satan. Yeah. I don't want to go in there, so we'll look around here first. I think that's the best idea. Because I'm pretty sure the game wants me to go in there. Though it is showing that I'm progressing down the bottom right when it said saving, so I'm not sure what I'm doing. And I'm a bit I'm a bit creeped out. Okay, examine shoe. I think this belongs to Calum. Cool, so I can turn it around and everything. Awesome. Now I've got Calum's shoe. What's this? Chad the chipmunk, huh? Just a drunk guy in a suit. Okay. Oh, that guy was um the the on the poster of the park. See. The graphics don't look too bad. I mean, that's pretty cool. I think that's a pretty cool photo right there. All right, cool. Let's um keep going. Oh, right, the graphics itself, as I said, don't look that bad. But the cutscenes, there's just something wrong about the cutscenes. They're like glitching in in their own heads using their hands. It's really weird. Really, really weird. That's okay. As I said, as long as we just Look at Callum, stay Look. where you are. Oh my god. Didn't think the amusement park could be a creepy place. Come on, mommy. Okay. Let's can I hop on you. Okay. Ride swan. I remember reading about uh, a haunted amusement park in the Goosebumps books. Do you, have you guys read that? The One Night at Horrorland or something? That was a pretty cool book. I, f I found that really, really fun to read. There's not really many books that I, that I read and enjoy, but I really enjoyed the Goosebumps series and, and One Night at Horrorland especially. Near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter. 
his wife and his two children, a boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel. They were very poor and had very little to bite or sup. What will become of us? The woodcutter asked his wife one night. I tell you what, husband, we will take the children into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow and abandon them there. No, my wife, I cannot do that, said the man. Then we will all four starve, you fool. Hansel and Gretel overheard their parents talking and Gretel began to weep. Do not fret, Gretel, Hansel said. He crept out of the hut and gathered white stones from the ground to fill his pockets. The next morning, the woodcutter leads the children into the forest. Before they leave, their mother gives them a slice of bread and warns them that they will get no more food that day. Clever Hansel leaves a trail of white stones behind them as they pass into the woods. When their father leaves them, the children wait a while, then follow the trail back to their parents' house. After receiving a thorough scolding from their parents for getting lost in the woods, the children are sent to bed without any supper. Hansel tried to sneak out and collect more white stones, but found that the door was locked. Tomorrow I will take them into the woods myself, the wife told the woodcutter. In the morning, their mother gave them a slice of bread and led them deep into the forest once again. Mm, what was that? Hansel My broke control his bread is vibrating. into pieces and left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead them safely home. But hungry-eyed birds snatched up the breadcrumbs and his trail was destroyed. Abandoned by their parents and unable to find the trail home, the children wandered in the forest for three days. The children stumbled into a clearing with an exceedingly strange house. Its walls were made of gingerbread, and its windows were panes of clear sugar. Hansel, desperately hungry, ran forward and began to nibble on the walls. Nibble, nibble, little mouse. At my house. An old woman emerged from the house, sniffing the air and peering around with cloudy eyes. Oh, you dear children, who brought you here? Just come in and stay with me. No harm will come to you. But Hansel and Gretel stayed back, for the old woman reminded them of their cruel mother. Come, children, don't be afraid. I have something for you. The old woman offered them two enormous lollipops. The children took them and began to eat. You see, nothing to fear here. Come inside, the old woman urged, and the children, still licking their sweets, followed. Oh my god. Once <laughs> at the house, the old woman changed. She stuffed Hansel into a cage and put Gretel to work, sweeping and cleaning her hut. Your brother will make a good mouthful, the old witch told Gretel. Once he is fattened up, I shall feast upon him. Time passed, and poor Hansel refused to eat, fearing the day that the witch would eat him. The witch, for her part, grew impatient. 
Today, I will cook and eat your brother, Gretel. Climb inside and light the oven. But Gretel pretended not to understand. Uh, I do not know how. Where is the opening? Fool, the old witch said. The opening is here. And she moved to show Gretel. Seizing her courage, brave Gretel gave the witch a shove. And the old crone tumbled forward into the oven. Gretel slid a large iron bolt over the door to the oven. Gretel freed her brother Hansel, and together they lit a fire beneath the oven. And though she screamed and begged, the children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled, and the witch was cooked. And then, because even children can't survive on sweets, they divided up the body of the old witch and ate her. Well, there's some parts of that story I don't remember, but I haven't read much on Hansel and Gretel. That could be completely correct that they ate the witch at the end, but I'm just going out on the limb and thinking that it's not correct. Um, uh, all, all right. He just looked at me. Oh my god. Come on, let's just go. Let's just leave them go, please. Any exit, please? Whew, okay. I was so scared he was going to turn around and going to do something. Alright, I got a trophy. Swans, gingerbread, and something. It didn't show the rest of it. Okay, so, so far it just told me... Hansel and Gretel. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. Those poor children. The whole world against them. The forest. The birds. The old witch. Even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister. Hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry. Looking for our own house made of candy. Looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. Interesting. I like that. So they must have. Oh, what's this? What is know. this about? I can't read that. It's too far away for me. But yeah, so that they must have not been the richest family beforehand. And so like every little surprise was huge in their eyes. I, I can kind of relate. Uh, that's interesting though. I, li I like that storyline. I mean, it's very cliche. Uh, you know, the little one gets lost in the, in the in, in amusement park. You know, it's... it's it's been done before, but I'm interested so far in how this is going to turn out. You think it's time to go in here? I think it's time to go in there. Next part. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I thought I was going to play this all today, but I might not have enough time to play it all today, so I'll be put them into, into separate parts. But this is really creepy so far. This is really creepy, but we haven't done too much. So it hasn't been too creepy. There's been a few scenes that's been creepy. The one coming up the escalator. And the one over there with this one that was pretty creepy. I think this is going to be a really fun little walkthrough. That's what I think. Thank you all for watching. I hope you're all here for the next part. I love you all. I'll see you in the next part.